It doesn't matter though. So you could do P12 or I12 or I21 or P21, right? Okay, so, but anyway, that's that instant center. And then 1, 3 is also obvious. That's right here, okay? And, but now the non-obvious one, the book showed this dash, okay? Um, and uh, the non-obvious one is the instant center between 2 and 3. Well, it would be, without this picture, it would be very difficult to visualize a point in space that if it's on 2, has the same velocity of, uh, uh, you know, the point on 3. Same direction and magnitude. But it is linked by the mechanism, and there is only one spot in space that would have the same magnitude and direction of, of speed, right, and velocity. Okay, but how do we find it? Well, according to Arnold Kennedy, we found the two obvious ones, and so we know that instant center has to lie on this line somewhere. Okay, because, you know, here's the two obvious ones, here and here. It has to lie on that line. So the final instant center, P23 or, or 32, has to lie on this line. But just where is that line? Um, how did we know it was here? It's obviously drawn here, but if I hadn't shown it, uh, you'd, you'd wonder it could be anywhere along this line, right, from Arnold Kennedy. Well, Remember, you know this is another joint, and even though it's not an obvious joint, um, you, you should memorize that if you've got a joint that's two degrees of freedom, meaning sliding and rolling, that specific combination of two degrees of freedom, that um, the instant center of that joint between there and there, you don't know exactly where it is just by knowing the joint, but you do know it's on the common normal somewhere. Remember, if, remember that... that uh, Diagram, I told you if, it, if, it, if, the, if the block purely slid, it would be at infinity. If it purely rotated, it would be right there. Um, and so it's on the dotted line. Remember that, uh, that joint? Well, because this is rolling contact, we know instant center is along that line. And now from Arnold Kennedy, we know it's along this line. And so obviously it has to be there. Okay, so do you see the reasoning of that? We used Arnold Kennedy to do this line. We used this line from just the joint, and then we know it had to be there. And you could visualize... If you had an extension on here, the velocity would be in that direction. If you had an extension on there, the velocity would be in the same, same direction there. So, so they, they would indeed be the same velocity at that point. Okay? Okay, very good. Um, okay, so now the question is, um, how, now that we know how many instant centers, uh, you know, what they are, how many instant centers a, a mechanism has, um, and how to find the obvious and non-obvious ones. Um, now what do we do with them to do velocity analysis? Because they're, they're important for velocity analysis, okay? That's uh, this next topic, okay? So, um, recall that um, the first order kinematic coefficient of a link, say, J, is theta j prime, which is the derivative of that theta j with respect to the input variable uh, theta i, say, okay? Well, then if you times that first order kinematic coefficient by the input velocity, omega i, angular velocity, you get omega j. Remember, we, we taught that. You find the first order kinematic coefficient, just multiply it by the input angular velocity, and you find the output. Okay, well, that means that omega j divided by omega i is the first order kinematic coefficient. You could also prove that just by this, right? Omega j is, is uh, d theta j with respect to time, and omega i is d theta i with respect to time. The delta time cancel, and it's d theta j over d theta i, which is the definition of first order kinematic coefficient. Okay. Okay, so it's useful to know that just by taking the output angular velocity divided by the input angular velocity, it's the first order kinematic coefficient. Um, well, we'll now relate kinematic coefficient to the location of instant centers of the mechanism. Okay, so any mechanism here. I'm going to give you a general approach. So um, first, it's, it's important to know that if I give you a mechanism, you're going to use this instant center approach to do velocity analysis. It needs to be drawn uh, to scale. It needs to be, you know, uh, if you took a ruler and measured it, you need to be able to get accurate results from it. You know, there, there, there could be all kinds of diagrams where you don't draw to scale, but you can get the right math because you, they just label it with certain dimensions. 
um, it, it, but it's not, it's not drawn with the correct relative dimension. So um, it's got to be drawn to scale to use this approach. Uh, so it looks like it would look in reality. Or you actually have a picture of it in reality and you can measure it. Okay, so that's the first thing that needs to be in place. Once you have a picture drawn to scale, uh, then you find the instant centers and it's the relative distance between these instant centers that's going to be measured to use to find the first order kinematic coefficient which can then be used to find the velocity of all the output links. Okay, so I'll show you how it's done. Okay, first I'm not going to give you a general solution. I'm going to show you some derivations and, uh, you know, we're going to solve this by hand a couple times. Then I'll show you the general. Okay, so say we had this mechanism here <coughs> and we had a vector, uh, vector r that points from point 0.24 or uh, P24, P21, which means it points from P21 to P24, okay? So this is a convention. There's a position difference vector where P24 and P21 are the, you know, position it points to from there, okay? All right, well, if we do the velocity difference equation and say we're assuming this point is on 2, right? So we want to find this. So, so you say VP21 okay, which is the velocity of this point, plus omega 2, which is the angular velocity of link 2, cross this vector, rp24, p21. That will be the velocity of that point if it were on 2, using the velocity difference equation, right? Because we step from this point to that point and we assumed it's all on one link p2, or on one link 2, okay? And so, but we also know VP21 is zero because the velocity here is zero, it's stuck to ground. And so that's what we know the velocity of that is, okay? Well, let's also find, and, and of course, it's, it's omega 2 cross RP, so it's directly up, VP24, okay? Let's also find that velocity um, as if it was a point on 4. So remember, if that point was, now you think of it as on 4, say you draw some extension down here, can you imagine four moving? Okay, then let's do the velocity difference equation to find the velocity of that. Okay, so it would be the velocity here, which is VP41, plus omega 4 cross this vector that points from here to here. Now remember, this one's obviously zero, and uh, this, this one is obviously not, <laughs> and it's, it's obviously pointing up here. And you know, because this is the instant center, P24, that is the point where if it was on 2 or a point that's on 4, they'd have the same velocity. So you know these guys equal. So you can set this equal to that. And if you um, take the cross product, of course, omega is always going to be perpendicular to them. So if you take the magnitude of these times them and times sine 90 degrees, it's just going to be 1. And so you get this equation here. And now what you can do with that equation there is remember omega 4 prime equals omega 4 divided by 2, omega 2, um, right? Or theta 4 prime equals omega 4 divided by omega 2. Then let's just reposition this equation. So we get omega 4 divided by omega 2, and you'll find you get uh, this divided by that. RP24, P21, okay? Um, is going to be this distance, okay? And then RP24, P41 is going to be this distance. So the ratio of this distance to this distance is the first order kinematic coefficient of theta 4 with respect to the input, theta 2. Okay, so what you could do is, is, is um, without doing all that derivation, if you just knew that theta 4 prime was this, you could just take that, you, if I gave you this picture and it was drawn to scale, I could take a ruler, and if I knew to measure this length, and then if I knew to measure this length, and divide by each other, and I was like, okay, that's the theta 4 prime, then I would just multiply that by omega 2, and I'd have omega 4. And we solve velocity analysis. So this approach basically requires you to draw all the, the instant centers, and then know which distance between which instant centers to measure and divide and then they give you the first order kinematic coefficients and you just multiply those by omega 2 and you get the output. Okay? 
All right. Um, so the question, obviously, is, is how do you know what ratios to find? Because I don't want to have to derive all that from scratch. Well, this is the general rule, okay? And, um, and, and I'm going to explain this in a minute because it looks like I'm kind of running out of batteries here. So I'll tune back in here.